Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your continued support. Please consider subscribing to our channel if you're watching for the first time. Give this video likes. As the youths of Kenya, the Gen Z, continue with their solidarity fight and calls for William Ruto to resign for a better government. Their cries and efforts are being witnessed and seen by many leaders, especially opposition leaders in Africa. Their quest for a better leadership has become infectious because many other youths in Africa and across the world are watching the determination with which they demand for change and others want to emulate this. One of the leaders who has been watching very closely, following very closely, the protest in Kenya is Julius Malema that leads the EAF, Economic Freedom Fighters Party. And he's been watching what is happening in Kenya. In fact, Julius Malema started when the IEBC and the Supreme Court declared William Ruto as the president of Kenya. And he called out Raila Moludinga to accept defeat, move on. At some point, he was even saying that Raila should resign so that history should not catch him on bad books. Not once, not twice, he has attacked Raila Moludinga and advised him to let William Ruto roll out his economic and political policies to take Kenya forward. This is because William Ruto uh, decided to hoodwink not only Kenyans, but Africa and the whole world. When he came up with the ideas that we should now shun the, the, the use of, of dollar. And he was saying that we, we must not depend so much on dollar. We can have our own currency as Africa. And when people like Malema listened to William Ruto, they thought this is not the new kid on the block. They thought this is the new Pan-Africanist. And because Julius Malema and the group have always been, you know, advocating for a, for a united Africa where we do not depend on the Western powers. So little did they know that William Ruto was a Trojan horse placed by Joe Biden to orchestrate, to advocate for the interest of the USA. And so when he came to Kenya, he came to cleanse his name. And Julius Malema came and said he thought William Ruto was a good man. But after William Ruto invited King Charles, and the way he's been, uh, you know, he invited King Charles here, he was visited by Jill Biden, the wife to the president of the USA, and the way he was invited in the, to, to address the European Union Parliament, and the way he went to uh, America, and the way he's been holding the the, the climate change summit and all that, Julius Malema said, William Ruto is a hypocrite. He is a puppet of the West and therefore he should not be tolerated. He made a U-turn. So Julius Malema on behalf of the EFF, the Economic Freedom Fighters Party, gave a statement, not just a statement, but a written document standing in solidarity with the Kenyan youths and telling them they must continue fighting for their, for their freedom. And he called out on Ruto to stop all these machinations of trying to form a government of, a government of national unity. And he told him, you cannot use the brutal force of the police to control your youth. I want us to look at this letter. It is a, a short letter, and I'm going to read it very fast, so that you get the contents of Julius Malema and the thoughts and feelings of the EFF and the, and the way South Africans are standing with Kenya because Kenya stands at crossroads. This is the third liberation. Let us go to the letter. It says EFF, that is the Economic Freedom Fighters. EF statement on the ongoing youth protest in Kenya. This letter was done on 22nd of July. So ladies and gentlemen, here it goes. The Economic Freedom Fighters EF proudly stands in solidarity with the courageous youth of Kenya who rose against the IMF and World Bank sponsored finance bill that sought to impose immense tax hikes 
on the Kenyan people. We congratulate the youth for their relentless struggle, which has led to the complete scrapping of the bill and the dissolution of, of President William Ruto's entire cabinet. Of course, William Ruto has since reconstituted that cabinet and people are going back to the street. However, we must vehemently commend the Kenyan police use of in intelligence organizations to suppress these just protests, which have now escalated to a call for Ruto himself to resign. The brutal killing of young protesters, both with live ammunition and through clandestine operations targeting youth leaders, is an egregious violation of human rights. The death toll of at least 50 lives lost since the protest began is a stark reminder of the length to which oppressive regimes will go to maintain power. So he's now calling William Ruto an oppressive regime. Just the other day, William Ruto was a Democrat to him. The EAF also notes with disdain the flimsy offer of a government of national unity with opposition poses as a response to the youth's demands for Ruto's resignation and better leadership. This superficial concession is an attempt to placate the masses without addressing the core issues of corruption and misgovernance. The youth of Kenya must remain steadfast and resilient until their legitimate demands are fully met. So Malema is saying, don't talk. Despite the Kenyan government's efforts to ban demonstrations, including the police's, uh, the police failed attempts to prohibit pro uh, protest in Nairobi. The court's suspension of the police order highlights the resilience of the Kenyan people in defending their constitution. Kenya's youth-led protests have ignited a powerful wave of inspiration across the continent. The youth of South Africa must not be left behind. Under the new anti-black government of national unity, GNU, the prospects for South Africa's youth have dimmed and they should expect worsening conditions if left unattended. So, you know, in South Africa, we also have a, a government of national unity and that's why he's against William Ruto and Raila Molodinga forming that government. The youth must gear up and prepare for the fight of their lives against the rising cost of living, commodified colonist education, unprecedented unemployment, and uh, a deteriorating minimum wage and working conditions. Therefore, South African Gen Zs must draw strength from the example set by the Kenyan counterparts and realize that they are in the midst of a battle. Just today, instead of addressing the genuine concerns raised on the youth during our debates of the parliamentary address, Mr. Ra Mr. Fala, Fala dismissed the EAF's debates as rude, rowdy, and disrespectful. He failed to address any of the crucial issues our youth MPs brought to light. This dismissive attitude mirrors the arrogance of Ruto, who is rapidly losing his grip on power due to his disregard for the youth. Ramaphosa should take a hard lesson from this and recognize the urgent need to engage with the voices of the younger generation. The, EF, the EFF urges the youth of Kenya to stay strong in their fight for economic justice. Their bravery and determination serve as a beacon of hope and a call to action for all oppressed people. The EFF remains committed to supporting all efforts to achieve economic freedom and true liberation for the youth of Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, I just read it all so that you can understand the thoughts and feelings of Julius Malema. Because Julius once thought that William Ruto was uh, the, the newest thing that ever came after oxygen. And you can't blame him because maybe it is uh, because of Raila's relationship with, with Ramaphosa that made him hate Raila. Or he thought William Ruto had come with new idea, ideas and would join them. They are fighting the same issues. Unemployment for the youth, oppressive government. And he's saying that 
the efforts but that are being made by Kenyan youth uh, is becoming a beacon of hope for many youths across Africa. And is telling them that they should not fail because if they fail, then other nations will not succeed. Kenyans must rise to the occasion the way they have risen and go to the fullest because many people are watching what they are doing and they have awakened they have awakened many youths in Africa and people now see the need of fighting for their freedom. You know, many a times people have been cowed. If you look at many youths across Africa, they are being oppressed. Brutality of the police. They are killed and maimed. They are tortured. They are detained. But when Kenyans rose to the occasion, they realized that people need to go out. I remember the Arab Spring when it began, I think, I began, I think it was in Tunisia, then in, in, in Egypt, where Hosni Barak, I think, was hosted. They, they went to, to, uh, uh, to Sudan. And it, it, there was a wave of revolution. If you look at Western countries now, Burkina Faso, Mali, they have decided that if we are not going to have a free and fair elections, if we are still going to have the Western powers coming to determine and dictate who becomes our president, they have decided to go on a coup. A coup mission where they just decide I'm taking over power. And if you look at those people, people like uh, Traore, they are doing a good job. And this kind of wave is very infectious. It's catching one nation to the other. And for EAF to do this, they have been following very closely. And they are happy because Malema believes that people must fight for their own economic, political, religious and social freedom and rights. And so, ladies and gentlemen, William Ruto is soon becoming, or not soon, but he has become a man on his own. The only friend he was remaining with was Joe Biden, who has now said he's not going for a second term. Maybe it is time for William Ruto to be connected to Kamala Harris. Because look at East Africa. Who is Ruto's friend? Him and Museveni are not friends except when the youths, they are united against the youths. Otherwise, they're not reading from the same script. Madame Sulu, they are never friends. Look at uh, Felix Shikedi in uh, Congo, they are never friends. You look at Rwanda, his minister, Murkomen, the former minister, had once said that uh, Kagame is a, a dictator and called that, um, said that that country is a small country. I don't know, he likened it to uh, a town or what, Nakuru, something of the kind. In Sudan, the two warring groups. One of them is Ruto's friend, another one does not trust Ruto. They are saying, we have pulled out. Even in South Sudan, the same thing. So William Ruto is not trusted. He does not have friends across Africa. People are used to his rhetorics. The speeches that he gave and people clap for him, now they know him. Because they understand that William Ruto will give you a speech. He knows what you need to hear at what time. He just wants to get away with the moment. But this determination... And the kind of courage and support that the youths are getting across Africa. They are not about to relent. They are not about to give up. They will move on. Because we understand that this is the third liberation. After defeating the colonial masters and we defeated Kanu to bring back multipartism, we are yet to fight what is now ailing, uh, ailing our African continent. Neocolonialism. Leaders who have been picked by the Western powers, US, the NATO group, Europe, and they have become puppets. They no longer work for the people. They work to please the colonial masters. Our resources are being exploited. They steal our money and they bank them in, in Europe and those countries. They want to introduce GMOs in our country. They want us to abandon our rich culture and they want us to adopt LGBTQ. They give contracts to those people. Those leaders are the common enemy of African youths. And they are now becoming part of the fight because we are fighting against diseases, ignorance. And now we have them. We hold elections, but those elections are mere formalities because there are people who are coming to determine who becomes president. And when you go to the streets, police brutality. And so ladies and gentlemen, this letter is going to shake William Bruto because it is adding the youth's weight. Youths understand that they are being watched everywhere. They are being supported and it is going to catch across Africa. A, they are watching Kenya and they are saying we must 
and we must rebel and we must fight because freedom does not come easily. I don't know, freedom does not come easily and for Julius Malema, he has finally seen the light and we can forgive him. Like the prodigal son, he can join the fight and people fight together.